last session we completed the third chapter vibhuti pada and today we begin the fourth and the last chapter of yoga sutras the fourth chapter is titled kaivalya pada kaivalya is the state of enlightenment state of mukti the state of liberation from this sutras 162 to 196 patanjali goes into the psychological processes and the deeper meta psychology and metaphysics related to meta psychology and this chapter is something which needs deep commentary unlike the third chapter where i could not give much commentary because i don't have experiences and knowledge of it what patan patanjali refers to in the third chapter this chapter is something where we can really go deeper into psychoanalysis and patanjali so let us see how patanjali approaches the deeper aspects he starts with an open holistic approach and says the siddhis which were referred to in the chapter 3 can be the result of birth herbal preparations which include psychedelics mantras penances austerity including sayama sayama is one of the penances not the only penance although patanjali chooses this to be his choicest of methods of penance in the third chapter perhaps he has found this method to be the quickest and the most effective or just the state of samadhi so he says all that was talked about in chapter 3 did not come only from sayama as was talked in the chapter 3 but sayama is one of the samayama as many pronounce it samayama is one of the methods other methods can be some people can have extraordinary attainments right from birth herbal preparations are extensively used mantras are very powerful if you know the right one and how to do it and penances of different types which may include bhakti yoga karma yoga kriya yoga integral yoga or just getting into the state of samadhi all of these are ways to get the extraordinary attainment so just as you can reach the state of samadhi from various standpoints various paths you can reach this also from various paths now patanjali starts with 163 about how the birth happens how do we choose our birth or how does the birth choose us and he says once prakruti once nature unfulfilled desires and karma of the past they guide one's birth so it is once journey of the self one's karma and intensely unfulfilled desires of pleasure of revenge of anything desire did not be only of pleasure it can very well be a desire of revenge also it can be a desire for power also can be a desire for knowledge also can be a desire for spiritual attainments also so he says once nature which includes journey of the self so once self journey once innate tendencies once unfulfilled desires and once karma guides one's birth so birth is not accidental 
it can be explained it is purposive and it is guided by a some law not a law that can be captured in the framework of the present empirical science but there is a law and we differ here from psychoanalysis psychoanalysis does not go into how the birth happens in the science of birth for psychoanalysis it is a question where we just say we don't know so on birth we say we don't know on constitution we say we don't know and we start after that because the moment you get into constitution and birth you directly get into spirituality or metaphysics <clears throat> the incidental cause the real life events leading to birth only facilitates birth does not cause birth just as a farmer who plows the land he facilitates the seed growing into a crop he cannot convert the seed into a crop by himself the farmer can neither manufacture the seed nor compel the seed to grow into a crop he can only facilitate the seed by removing obstacles and providing encouraging circumstances but the real thing is seed grows into a crop by itself making use of the farmer's work similarly two human beings getting into a sexual act cannot make anyone take birth they only facilitate taking birth and if no one is ready to take birth in their couple no matter how much sex they have they still will go without children so he says the real life events the real life sexual events of two human beings only facilitates birth it does not cause birth the birth is caused by what is said in 163 one self journey one's tendencies unfulfilled desires and the load of karma and also the journey of the universe and guidance of higher beings all of that gets into causing the birth then he goes into the mind from the birth individual minds are created only out of the sense of i ness so he says what we call the individual mind is a psychic apparatus built around the pole of i ness the first pole is i exist and this locationalizing of the psychic material in a particular proportion around this axis of i ness is what calls creates the psychic content of the personality that we have so what we call our psychic personality is a unique collection of psychic material around the pole of i if one goes deeper here one can go into psychoanalytic depth uh, let us go into the chaos that is there in early life before this i ness is firmly established there is a spiritual i ness there is a psychological i ness and there is a social i ness so we all have a, a social self an authentic self and a spiritual self early in life laka refers to this situation of the mirroring stage where everything is chaotic inside and in the mirror the child sees a integrated coordinated whole as the in, in the physical terms of the body so there is a physical consolidation but a psychic chaos and to manage that chaos some agency has to be created 
some phenomena has to happen. And Lacan says, we create the false eye, what he calls the phenomena of mechanisms. The false eye who is coordinated, consolidated, stable and strong to give us relief from this primal chaos. So this sense of I-ness is at a deepest level a spiritual soul property of spiritual uniqueness. And then it gets into a, a, a system ego. And then it gets into the personality ego. And then it gets into the social ego. So these individual minds are created out of this I-ness. It is around this pole of I-ness that the material is collected. Some amount of fear, some amount of greed, some amount of envy, some amount of happiness, some amount of empathy, some amount of sensitivity. So everyone collects a unique proportion, a unique collection in terms of its constitution, in terms of absolute amounts and relative proportions of all the different types of psychic material around the sense of I-ness. And an individual mind is created. Then he says, 166, individual minds appearing so different, owing to be deployed in multiplicity of activities are in fact one. And this is a philosophical, spiritual statement. This is not a scientific statement. We all know my mind is not the same as your mind. So scientifically, we are different. But if we look in terms of origin, there is a commonality of origin of consciousness. There is a commonality of anchor from which all minds proceed. And this one gets to know when one experiences the universal oceanic oneness above the ordinary mind state. In essence, because all of us have in essence the same attributes and purpose. Everyone has a purpose of happiness and progress ultimately leading to the state of Samadhi. So individual minds, they appear different because they are involved in multiplicity of different activities. But in fact, they are one if we look at them deeply because they are essentially composed of the same constituent elementals and they are moving towards the same larger purpose where all of us are cocks in the wheel. So there is an overarching principle from which influences are there on all these individual minds and their individual minds work unknowingly towards a purpose something which Hegel also referred to. That the individual minds are not disjointed, independent, autonomous units without any convergence in origin or purpose. But there is an overarching influence of the universal principle on all the individual minds and they are in some way or the other cooperatingly or unwantedly Consciously or unconsciously, voluntarily or involuntarily, they are moving towards a large purpose of this principle of the universe. So, in working, they are coordinating even if they don't know it. In terms of the laws they obey, they are similar to each other. And in terms of constituents they are made of, they are similar. And if one goes deeper and experiences oceanic oneness, all minds appear to proceed from the same oceanic anchor. And they all dissolve into the same oceanic anchor. So they appear different as though there is nothing common, but in fact they are one. But this oneness can be experienced or known only in deeper states. Uh, you came closest to this in terms of the collective unconscious. Where he did not go deep enough is to say the collective unconscious itself is guided by a 
overarching principle which would give the purpose to the collectivity so he uh, based this theory on the purpose of the individual individuation but the collectivity also is into individuation the planet is also into individuation so those larger collective individuation at larger levels of the human collectivity and the planet that you did not go into that is what is referred to here meditating on this fact of oneness hidden behind the multiplicity from this meditating on this fact of oneness hidden behind the multiplicity the state of truth and desirelessness is attained if one meditates on this first in the philosophical terms intellectual terms and then in experiential terms realizing the oneness behind multiplicity of minds not only minds but behind multiplicity of creation the state of truth and desirelessness is attained one more way to attain the state of samadhi kaivalya it's very difficult to find somebody as open and holistic and as knowledgeable as patanjali karma for the yogi is neither white nor black for others the karma is threefold now he comes to the karma he says for yogi it is neither good nor bad neither white nor black it is what is called gunatith beyond the gunas beyond the qualities beyond the capability of the action to create karma so karma for the yogi is neither karma is action action for the yogi is neither white nor black so the word meaning of word karma here is action action for the yogi is neither white nor black for other it is threefold it can be sattvic pure and refined rajasic passionate or tamasic related to inertia indolence indulgence or uh, something brutal disgusting so for ordinary people the work that they do is either sattvic or rajasic or tamasic or in other words the work they do is either white black or gray let me just put it in the same order sattvic is white rajasic is gray tamasic is black so you for yogi it is neither white nor black for others it is either white or gray or black so for others action creates karma for yogi he can do action without karma because he does it in a state of observation he is not identified with what he is doing the observing ego is strong and completely detached from the participating ego this action is not talked about in psychoanalysis because they have not gone so far actually that it is possible to be in a state of observation awareness and act in the world without creating negative strong effect this is one of the solutions for dealing with creation of negative strong effect that if you do action 
in this state, strong negative effects, even strong positive effects will not happen. So in psychoanalysis, the root always is, not always, root for most problems is generation of strong effect. And then everything else starts. Once the strong effect is generated, part of it is repressed, part of it is expressed, part of it is sublimated, part of it projected, and what cannot be dealt with gets into creation of symptoms or a psychosomatic sickness. So the root of much of the problems in psychoanalysis is strong effect generation. And one way to stop this strong effect generation is what Patanjali refers to here. Get into a state of yogi, the state of observer, and then neither strong positive effect white nor strong negative effect black will be generated. White and black refer to many things. One of them is effect, not necessarily the meaning effect does not exhaust the meaning of the word white or black. It includes thoughts also, actions also. The fruition of the threefold karma leads to the creation of tendencies, vasanas. So because ordinary people do karma without being in the state of detachment and observer observation, with a sense of I-ness, therefore this Threefold karma, white, grey and black or sattvi, gatsik, tamsik, it leads to creation of tendencies. And these tendencies, they continue across birth, place and time. They continue from birth to birth. And therefore, the memory of tendencies is continuous across births, across places, across time. These tendencies always are carried by the soul from birth to birth across places, across time. And these tendencies in their origin are primordial given the eternal nature of desire. So this is a very important philosophical statement. He says, say for example, somebody has a strong desire for eating sweets, cannot eat sweets and creates very strong anger. And repeatedly it happens and this desire for sweets and anger are created. They remain as tendencies. Go from birth to birth and manifest in different ways. The aggression will come out in 10 different ways. The craving for sweets will come out in 2-3 different ways. But Patanjali says, what appears individual is in fact transpersonal. That if you go into the root of anger, into the root of desire to have sweets, sense pleasure, taste pleasure, and sweet taste pleasure specifically, these are primordial elements in the universe which our soul has decided to live out in some way. So in the root origin, all our desires are transpersonal. In the plan of the universe, all entities which have started in a particular state have to undergo certain transformations till the end of the universe. And those transformations are massive and an individual contributes a small component to that full transformation. Say for example, metaphorically believe that, metaphorically conceptualize that 100 kg of anger has to be processed in this journey of the universe. And out of 100 kg, 50 kg is to be processed by human beings. And out of it, you are supposed to process 5 kg and out of it, 1 kg in one birth. So you may feel the anger of 1 kg in this birth is mine, which is true in a way. It's not untrue. But in its primordial nature, essential original nature, what is happening is a universal transpersonal entity is becoming personal and getting processed in the personal situation. 
So these tendencies in their origin are primordial nature, primordial given the eternal nature of desire, the elemental nature of desire. So there is a universal desire and human beings partake a small component of that universal desire in any given birth and they leave it out. But as they leave it out, the karma is getting created and then the cycle starts. So it is the, at individual level, it is the journey of the self which wants certain experiences and the self wants certain experiences because the self has been so created by the principle of the universe. So the root starts with the principle of the universe creating our self in a particular way with certain nature and tendencies with a program of its own. So there is a initial point loading of karma on the soul right at the moment of its creation. And then the soul tries to satisfy it, but the satisfaction is by taking certain elements from the universal nature. So the program of soul, the search for fulfillment happens through a psychological process and the psychological process involves first creation of a human integer or some other form of integer and in that components are taken from the, the bricks are taken from the universe to create the building of the integer. So Patanjali here goes into those parts. The moment he talks about primordiality and eternity of desire, he is going into spirituality and philosophy beyond psychology. So the tendencies, the core of all motivations, all psychological entities, all biological entities, the primordial origin of everything is transpersonal, eternal and universal. And everything that constitutes us is actually a small part taken from a larger pool. And the pool of pools is the universe. Uh, in this chapter, we will have a lot of commentary, a lot of issues. Uh, write to me at hvindia at gmail.com. I am not regular on YouTube. So any questions, write to me on hvindia at gmail.com.